In part 7, the last message in this series, we discuss the importance of continuously growing in our revelation of God, His Word and His ways. We also address how to balance reason, the renewed mind and the leading of the Holy Spirit and avoid the pitfall of presumption. If you brought your Bible, I want you to hold it high up in the air. Let's say this out loud, bold and strong. This is God's Word. This is God speaking to me. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing to many people. I receive His Word, I believe His Word, and I live by His Word. Christ is my Master, and to Him I am in absolute surrender. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you. Please turn around to people around you, in front of you, behind you. Shake hands, give them a nice smile, say hello, share your name with them. And you may be seated, please. All right. Today, we're going to conclude our series on, which one? <laughs> on emotional wholeness and deliverance. I know we've had two breaks in between because we had guest speakers come and minister to us. So I just want to do a quick review and then today we will bring... Uh, to us the last message in this series. We've been spending time through the month of July and August talking about emotional wholeness and deliverance. The fact that God wants each one of us to be emotionally whole. That is in our mind, our will, our emotions. God wants us healthy. He wants us well. And like we said in Psalm 23 verse 3, He restores our soul. So He makes us whole. A life has its problems and challenges and brings its hurts and so on and so forth. But God makes us whole. And many things in life are connected to the well-being of our soul. Like we saw from 3 John verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So even as your soul prospers, your health and just doing well in life, they're all interconnected. They're all interdependent. And so the well-being of our soul is so important. The emotional wholeness, uh, emotional wholeness is so important. Just to quickly review some of the things we've covered in the first message in this series. Uh, we talked about problems and causes. Why, you know, what causes problems in our soul? emotionally and, and uh, what are some of the problems and how they impact our lives. In part two of this series, we talked about receiving healing and deliverance. How to receive healing. What you and I can do to receive healing emotionally. And we also said there is need for deliverance because sometimes some of the problems you and I face in the realm of our soul are because of demons, are because of evil spirits. And so we need to be delivered. We went through that. Uh, in the second part of this message. In part three, we talked about journeying into emotional wholeness. We said it's not enough just to receive prayer and deliverance at one point in time, but we've got a journey to wholeness. And some of the things we do as we make this journey to wholeness is we talked about receiving the Father's love, coming into a place where you and I are settled in the love of God. We know for sure that we are unconditionally, immeasurably loved by our Heavenly Father. Being established in our identity in Christ. Uh, and we live out of who we are in Christ. And we also learn to release the past. Let go of the past. Things that have happened. In the fourth part of this message, we talked about staying emotionally whole. Some disciplines that you and I can have in life, uh, daily life, to stay whole. We talked about renouncing lies with the truth of God's word. So the enemy bombards our mind with lies. We need to learn how to renounce those lies. Uh, speaking blessing, canceling curses. We talked about guarding against negative emotions and practicing the power of forgiveness. 
Offenses will come, but you don't have to keep them. You can release forgiveness and stay whole. In part five of this series, we talked about the conquest of the mind. We have a book available outside on the same title. But we talked about the fact that the mind is a battlefield. The, the, our greatest fight, our battle, is in the area of the mind. And that's where temptations, that's where uh, accusations, all kinds of things that the enemy does against us, it comes to us in the area of the mind. So we need to know how to take every thought captive and how to renew our mind and maintain a positive mindset. The last message of this series, in part six, we talked about crucifying the flesh. So our emotional well-being is also connected to what we do in our body. Because the Bible says fleshly lusts war against the soul. So it's important. as We need to keep our flesh, the bodily desires, in subjection. We talked about that. I mean, in that message, we talked about seeds, roots, and fruits. The fact that you and I may not, don't have much control on seeds that have been sown into our lives, especially when we're growing up, our environment, and things that happen around us, it could, bad seeds could have been sown, which have taken root and are now producing bad fruit in our lives. You can't do anything about the seed that was sown, but you and I can do something about the roots. And we said that the Lord Jesus came to lay the axe to the roots of things. Right? And, and he takes those things out by the roots. There are four common roots we talked about in all of us. There is self, pride, jealousy, and lust. Common for all of us. And we need the Lord Jesus to deal with the root of those things. And there could be other things in our lives personally because of some of the experiences we've gone through. But we invite the Lord Jesus to lay the axe to the root and then we learn to walk in the Spirit. In this last message in this series, part 7, we are talking, going to talk about living daily with a renewed mind. Living daily with a renewed now, let's just, let's just recall or just go back on some of these verses. In Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, the Bible tells us, and these are verses that you and I are familiar with, and I'm not going to you know, repeat those verses. I mean, I'm not going to make us turn there, but Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. The Apostle Paul writes, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable to God. It's your reasonable service. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Just as believers, don't conform yourself to the world. Be transformed. Have a metamorphosis, a change in your life. How? By the renewing of your mind. So all of us, we need, we are continuously involved in this process as believers of renewing our minds. Again, in Ephesians 4, verse 23, the Apostle Paul writes, he says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind or be renewed in the attitude of your mind. So this renewed mind, what does it involve? We said previously, the renewed mind is learning to take on the thoughts and the ways of God. Isaiah 55, verses 8 through 11. God says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. But then what does he tell us to do? He says, let the wicked man forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. So you forsake your ways. You forsake your thoughts. You come to me. You learn to take on my ways and my thoughts. So that's renewing the mind. Are you all with me so far? If your mind's falling asleep. Just wake it up. I know it's been a long week. <laughs> but, so, renewing the mind. It's you and I taking on the ways and thoughts of God. We are letting go of the ways and the thoughts. We are forsaking the ways and the thoughts of the wicked and the unrighteous. And we are embracing the ways and thoughts of God. That's renewing our mind. Another aspect of renewing our mind is taking on the attitudes of Christ. Philippians 2 and verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That means let this attitude be in you. So you and I take on the same attitudes of Christ. That's walking with a renewed mind. 
And, and so uh, we, as we learn to renew our minds, uh, and, and, and as, as living daily with a renewed mind, first of all, it's a continuous process of receiving revelation and growing in the knowledge of God. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. And secondly, in living daily with a renewed mind, it includes the conquest of the mind, which we have addressed earlier, where we learn to take every thought captive. And thirdly, we need to learn to balance reason, a renewed mind, the leading of the spirit, and avoiding the pitfall of presumption. I'm going to talk about that. So, in living daily with a renewed mind, first of all, we must learn, uh, we must engage in a continuous process of receiving revelation and growing in the knowledge of God. What does that mean? You are a new person in Christ. You are a new man in your spirit. And this new man, your spirit man, that's born again, is new, is growing in the knowledge of God. You're learning, you're discovering new things about who God is, about what He's done for you, about His promises. Now, as your new man is receiving wisdom, revelation, it must also begin to impact your thinking. So your thinking now aligns itself to the revelation that your spirit is receiving about who God is. Are you with me? So this is an ongoing process. Colossians 3 verse 10, he says, You've put on the new man, which is renewed, or correctly, it's being renewed in knowledge of its creator. So your spirit man is a new man. And this new man is being renewed. It's growing in knowledge of its creator. And as you are receiving revelation in your spirit, as you're understanding and comprehending spiritual truth, now it, be it should begin to change the way you think. Paul prayed like this for the Ephesians in Ephesians 1, 17 through 19. He says, may the God, the Lord uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may he give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. In the knowledge of Him. So it says the Holy Spirit must give you wisdom and revelation. So that you can know God. So that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. You may come to know the hope of your calling. The riches of His inheritance in the saints. And the greatness of His power towards us. So your spirit is receiving revelation from the Holy Spirit. Wisdom and revelation. is receiving knowledge. And as your spirit is growing... Your mind should also be changed or renewed in accordance to that revelation. Are you with me so far? So that's why it's so important for you and me to receive the ministry of God's Word. Because although you're born again, you're new in the Spirit, I'm new, we are born again. We still need to grow in our revelation, in our understanding, in our knowledge of our Creator. Our spirit needs to grow. We don't know it all to be growing. And as our spirit is growing, our mind must also be renewed. You got it? So that's part of living daily with a renewed mind. Daily, I'm growing in my knowledge of the Lord. And therefore, my thinking is also daily changing. For example, and I'll just give a very simple example. You got saved, started coming to church, and you were just worshiping with people and uh, till then maybe you and I we didn't know that we need to honor God with our money I'm not saying this because we need money I'm just <laughs> giving an example of pastors no 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 just giving an example maybe you know we didn't know but now we are saved we love Jesus we are born again we are new in our spirit and then revelation comes you read the scripture and you find in the Bible that we are to honor God with our money. And your, heart, your spirit begins to connect with that. Yes, I must honor God. So you receive revelation. Nobody needs to convince you, force you. You just know in your heart. And yes, it's a good thing to honor God with my money. Because it's in the word. The revelation comes. The understanding comes. Then your mind needs to catch up. Right? Because maybe in my mind, 
I may not be very generous. I may not be very liberal. I'll have my reasons, whatever. But then now my mind begins to change. Yes, it's a good thing to give to God. And then I, my living, the way I live is changed. I now begin to give to God. And this is a continuous process. So like this, I receive revelation in my spirit about various things in my life. And then it transforms my, it renews my thinking and it transforms the way I live. That's living daily, part of living daily with a renewed mind. The second part of living daily with a renewed mind, which I mentioned, is the conquest of the mind. I won't go into it this morning because we've covered that previously. I'm going to jump directly to C, which is learning to balance reason a renewed mind and the leading of the spirit and avoiding the pitfall of presumption. I'm going to, I want to spend some time on this before we close this morning. For all of us, especially as believers and with a renewed mind, there are three elements that we must understand and recognize. There is reason. There is the leading of the Holy Spirit. And there is God's word, its principles and promises. So the believer's mind, there is reason, there is the leading of the Holy Spirit, and there is God's word. Principles and promises of God's word. And we must learn as believers... As we are learning to live daily with a renewed mind. How these interplay. Are you with me so far? Now, let's talk about each of those. Reason. Which is our mental faculties. The ability to think, to analyze, apply logic, investigate. Reason is given to us by God. It's not from the devil. It's only when you use it in the wrong way. Reason is given to us by God. He created our mind. He gave us the ability to think, to analyze, to strategize, so on. Now, many believers don't like that. No, forget reason. I live by faith. And so, I want to emphasize this morning that God's given us our mind. And look at some scriptures. Proverbs 13 verse 16. Every prudent man acts with knowledge, not ignorance. He gets information and he acts with it. That's being prudent. Proverbs 19 verse 2. It is not good for a soul to be without. That means it's not good for us to uh, abstain from information. Get it. Get education. Get learning. It's good. Our Proverbs 24 verse 6. For by wise counsel you will wage your own war. So again counsel. In a multitude of counselors there is safety. Or in uh, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 20. In the New Testament the Apostle Paul writes. Brethren do not be children in understanding. In malice be babies. But in understanding be mature. So there is that place of reason, of knowledge, of understanding, of being prudent that is important in our lives as part of the renewed mind. And yet, we have something that supersedes that, which is the leading of the Holy Spirit. That means the Holy Spirit is speaking to us, guiding you and me and telling you and me Giving us specific instructions. The Bible says, for instance, in Romans 8 and verse 14, uh, that as believers we are led by the Spirit of God. Same thing in Galatians uh, 5 and verse 18. If you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. So as believers, we are led by the Holy Spirit. Jesus taught, taught us in John 14, 16 to 18. He said, you know, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you in the person of the Holy Spirit. He's come to you in me. Jesus. And he said in John 16, 13 through 16, he said, the Holy Spirit will take what I'm saying and he will speak that to you. He will guide you into all truth. He will show you things to come. 
So this is something happening in the life of the believer. The Holy Spirit is speaking to us in our spirit and He's giving us instruction. He's giving us direction. Now, some of the instruction, the direction from the Holy Spirit may not fit into reason. Take, for example, things, instruction the Lord Jesus gave while He was on the earth. He told the people, fill the water pots with water and then draw out and give to the governor of the feast. Said Jesus, they want wine, not water. <laughs> or when there were 5,000 and more people and all they had was five loaves and two fish. He said, tell them all to be seated. He prayed. He said, come on now, let's go distribute. Jesus, five loaves, two fish, more than 5,000 people. It doesn't fit into reason. Or think about other things that the Lord Jesus said. Peter and his team, they had toiled all night. They came back to the shore. Jesus used their boat for a while. He gave the boat back and he said, Peter, go out. Throw your net for a great catch. Said, Lord, we worked all night. We have not caught anything. But because it is you, I'll do it. In other words, we've checked these waters out. There's nothing here. But because it's you. It didn't fit in, doesn't fit into my reason, but I'll do it anyway because it is. So as believers, we must use our reason, but our reason must be subjected to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Which means if the Holy Spirit is giving you a specific instruction, do it. Even if it doesn't fit into reason. And then there is the realm of God's word. Which is principles and promises that we have in the written word of God. And our reason must also be subject. To the written word of God. The principles and the promises of the word of God. That as I submit to the word of God. Even though there are instructions. There may be things in the word. Which my reason may not necessarily align itself with. For instance he says love your enemies. It's in the word. Lord. That's hard. It doesn't sometimes agree with my reason. Right. And so there are instructions like that in God's word. Principles, even promises. And I submit my reason to God's written word. So in a believer's mind, and we're talking about the renewed mind. We need to understand the interplay of reason, the leading of the Holy Spirit, and God's word. So what is the renewed mind? The renewed mind is where we are able to use our reason in alignment and in subjection to God's word and the leading of the Holy Spirit. Are you with me so far? What is the renewed mind? It's the mind where we are able to use our reason in subjection to the Holy Spirit and to the written word of God. That's the renewed mind. The renewed mind is not a mind that is void of reason. Some people think, oh, God told us to live with a renewed mind, so get rid of reason. No. A renewed mind uses reason, but the reason is in subjection to the Holy Spirit and to the Word of God. So, how does the interplay of these three work out in the life of a believer? And I think this is so important. There are times when there is no specific word from the Holy Spirit. And there is no specific chapter and verse. That's when you just use your reason. And God is absolutely fine with that. For instance, there was no specific instruction for most of us on what we, we had to wear this morning. You just woke up. You didn't turn to the first book of, you know... <laughs> Chapter so and so to find out what you're supposed to wear to church. You just used your reason. Picked up what you wanted to wear. Word and came. Perfectly fine. God is not going to say you didn't wear what I wanted you to wear. No. 
Use your reason. Perfectly fine. Now, some people say, no, I have to pray about everything. Holy Spirit, tell me what I'm supposed to wear. Holy Spirit, just make up your own mind. <laughs> you decide. You know, so sometimes we don't understand that God wants us to use our reason. Areas where the Holy Spirit is not giving you a specific word, not giving, uh, there's no chapter and verse. Use your reason. God's absolutely fine with it. Then, there are areas where you have the word of God. You may also have a specific instruction of the Holy Spirit, but you've got to use your reason to act on that word correctly. Let's take an example. The word of God says he will, keep, he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. You know it's in the Bible. You know it's a promise. God's angels are guarding you all the time. But when you cross the road, you still use your reason. Look left, look right, then cross. There is the word. But you've got to use your reason to correctly know when to apply that word. Not when you're crossing Bangalore Road. <laughs> I mean, there is a place for that. But you don't just say, hey, the Bible says he will give his angels charge over me. So I'll just close my eyes and walk across the road. You don't do that. Are you with me? So even though there is the word of God concerning a spirit. What are you doing? You have to use reason to know when to apply that word. And what is the correct application of that word? And this is where many times believers make mistakes. Now, there is a time and place when we have to leave reason aside. The Bible does say in Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6, for instance, the Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own. It doesn't say don't use your understanding. It says don't lean on your own. So your understanding is being used, but you're not depending on it. Trusting. So this is faith, where you're willing to subject your reason to the leading of the Holy Spirit or to the word of God. So for instance, let's take the same example of giving. The word of God says, give and it shall be given to you. So in a situation where even if it's a little hard for you to give something, you still choose to give because the word says you're acting on that word. You're still choosing to give. You're acting on that word. You're still giving. But that positions you now to receive the rest of that promise. It shall be given to you. So in that situation, you're trusting in the Lord, you're exercising faith, trusting in the Lord with all your heart, leaning not on your own understanding. So there is a place for that, where you act on the word, and you're subjecting your reason to the written word of God. There's also a place and a time when you subject your reason to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Take some examples from the Bible. In Hebrews chapter 11, verses 7 and 8, it talks to us about Noah and about Abraham. It says in verse 7, by faith Noah, being warned of things not yet seen, built an ark. That means they had no rain up until that time. They never seen a flood. And God is saying, build an ark because it's going to rain and it's going to be flooded. I've never, I don't know what rain you're talking about, God. I don't know what flood you're talking about. I've never seen one, but I'm going to build the ark. By faith. So that's faith. Or look at Abraham, verse 8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a land which the Lord would give him for a promise. And he went out not knowing where he was going. So this is, here's an example where he had a specific word. God spoke to him specifically. Abraham, I need you to do this. Go do it. It didn't fit in his reason. You know, like all men today, Sarah's asking, where are we going? He says, I don't know. Just come with me. And so they're off. So I'll take you to a land. God is going to show me. We'll get there. Don't worry. So he's off. 
not knowing where he is going. So the reason has to be submitted to the specific leading of the Holy Spirit. Are you with me so far? So in our renewed minds, this is the renewed mind, where you are using reason, but you're using it in submission to the leading of the Holy Spirit and to the Word of God. Now, I just want to make a side comment here. Many of us, thank God for technology, and because of technology, we have access to information. We have access to preachers and sermons and uh, all kinds of things out there. How are you going to determine what you read or what you hear online is truth or not? You can't do it based solely on who is saying it. Because there are lots of people who have got great, when I say great, I mean big in size, following of ministries or whatever. Just doesn't, that doesn't mean what they say is truth. So what do you do? You've got to use reason. To evaluate what you hear, come back to the Word of God, put it in Gen put it through between Genesis and Revelation, and evaluate, test if what you're hearing is the truth or not. You can't go purely by because so and so said it, it has to be right. No, you've got to use reason. So we come back to Acts chapter 17, verses 10 through 11. It talks about the people in Berea that they, you know, when Paul and Silas came to them. They didn't say, well, this is Paul. Let's just take everything he said. No. Even though it was Paul speaking, what did they do? It says in verse 11, they received the word. They paid attention. They, they were open to what he had to say. But what did they do? They searched the scriptures. The word search there is analyze, investigate, scrutinize. They searched the scriptures to see if what Paul was telling them was indeed right or wrong. So I want to challenge you and me as believers. You've got to search the scriptures. You've got to study the word. Whether it's me speaking or anyone else speaking, you've got to do the same thing. You receive, you learn, you listen, but you've got to go back. Search the scriptures. You've got to know the words. That's where you use reason. To evaluate everything you're hearing, no matter who says it. It doesn't matter what big of a ministry or how great a name they may have in Christendom. You've still got to evaluate what is said. Let's get back to what we were talking about. Now let's talk about this area of presumption. If we do not correctly understand the interplay of reason, the leading of the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God, many believers can get into another area, a gray area and a very dangerous area, which we call presumption. And the word presumption is also in the Bible. You can study it through. Essentially, you'll find that if a prophet presume, speaks something that God has not spoken, God says that's presumption. Or if somebody decides to do something that was not in line with the Word, God says that's presumption. So in our definition this morning for presumption, it means simply that we are assuming something to be the truth when it's not. And many believers get into that realm and they don't even know they are in that realm. And that's a dangerous place to be. Some examples of presumption. When we assume we've heard a specific instruction from God, but God has not given that to us. For instance, suppose somebody thinks they have heard from God. I need to quit my job, pack my family, and go someplace to do ministry. It's a very noble thing. But what if God has not spoken that word and this person assumes he has heard something from God? Now it's okay if they're single, you know, they can make it somehow. But hey, if you have a family, and you do something like this, you can put a lot of other people in pain. Just because you presumed or assumed you heard from God. Are you with me? 
But when people are off in their presumption, it's very difficult to get them back. Because now presumption leads to delusion. That means you are now in a very strong place where you believe that what, what you think is true and nobody can get you out of it. It's very hard. Because you're unwilling. You're closed out to any reason. Basically in a place of delusion. Self delusion. Or another presumption, another way presumption can come is when we misapply a written verse of scripture, assuming it's something God wants us to do. So there is a verse, but you're misapplying that verse. I remember back in the 80s, I read about this. There were four young men who were missionaries serving God. God was using them wonderfully in the villages and and they had to cross a river to go on to the other, to reach villages on the other side. Now they were so excited, on zeal, on fire. God was doing wonderful things. They said, hey, Jesus walked on water. Peter walked on water. I'm sure we can walk on water because we are going to preach the gospel to the other people on the other side. The river was full, strong, strong. They stepped on the water. And all four of them were drowned. Now, that was presumption. They were taking a word, but misapplying it. The consequences can be serious sometimes. God is not obligated to undergird us when we are in presumption. Are you with me so far? Nobody's saying yes. <laughs> So, what's our safeguard against presumption? Well, you and I must learn to test everything. And that's where reason comes in. If you feel the Holy Spirit has spoken to you, if you feel you, there's a certain verse of Scripture God wants you to act on and in your context, you need to test it. Check it up with other Scripture. Is it the right application of the Word? You need to get godly counsel. And this is where some of us mature Christians are very bad at. We think we are so mature, nobody needs to speak to us. That's itself as a sign of immaturity. Because mature people are willing to listen, are teachable. So you need to get godly counsel. Take your, what you feel God has spoken to you. Go talk to somebody who knows God, who knows His Word, who can speak into your life and situation. What I, you ask them, what I feel I'm hearing from God, is it right or not? Do you bear witness to it? Or what, if I, what I'm seeing in the Word, is it right or not? Do you see the same thing in the Scriptures? Get godly counsel. Wait for two or three confirmations. The Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So wait for confirmations. Don't just jump off on, the, on your first think, uh, inkling that this is the, the Spirit of God leading me, especially in big things. So therefore, you and I must learn to listen to God in small things before, and it's okay to make small mistakes, before we listen to God for big things that, that can have dramatic or uh, uh, you know, big impact on our lives. Listen to the Holy Spirit in small things. Everyday things. Listen. If you make mistakes, it's okay. In small things. But if you right away want to listen to the Holy Spirit, something really big, and you've never, you've not been, uh, you're not acquainted with His leading, how He leads you, it could be dangerous. So learn to listen to the Spirit of God. In small things, things that you begin that are not serious. Now, as I mentioned, presumption could lead us into a lot of problems. And this is where emotional problems come in, in the lives of well-meaning believers. That they get in the area of presumption. It leads to confusion, delusion in their lives. And, 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 and they end up uh, in other emotional problems. So how do you come out of it? We need to recognize where you went wrong, accept responsibility for what you did. And be willing to work in humility through the changes that need to be made to come out of that place of presumption. Be willing to backtrack. It's okay to say I made a mistake. And we as a community 
are supportive. We want to remain supportive of the people. It's okay, yes, you try to listen to God. If you make mistakes, it's okay. We are there to help you. We're not going to stone you. That's in the Old Testament. So here we support, we encourage, it's okay to make mistakes. But you've got to be teachable. You've got to be willing to listen. Accept you're wrong. Accept you made a mistake. Work, work through the whole process of coming back. So as I close off this whole series here on emotional wholeness and deliverance, this last message is more for us to understand that we are to live, by a, live daily with a renewed mind, but a renewed mind does not abandon reason. It knows how to use reason in subjection to the leading of the Holy Spirit and to the written word of God, the principles and promises in the word of God. And we are growing in our knowledge of the Lord. As we increase in our revelation of who God is, uh, we let our thinking also align itself to that revelation. Amen? So we'll put all this together in a book and get it out to you sometime. But here ended the lesson. Let's stand to our feet and let's take a few moments just to pray, please. I call the worship team up. So as you're standing here before, in the presence of God, if the Lord is, is speaking to your heart this morning and saying, hey, especially those of us who are about to make decisions and various things in life. Yes, we are led by the Holy Spirit, but there's nothing wrong in using the reason God's given you. So, would you be willing to say, God, help me to receive godly counsel. Help me to test what I'm hearing, what I feel the Holy Spirit is saying. And however God is dealing with you, would you take a few moments to respond this morning? Especially if you're in that place where you're making decisions, you're about to make decisions. Say, God, give me that wisdom that I need, God. How do I balance my reason? What I feel the Holy Spirit is leading me and speaking to me very specifically. And what I see in Scripture. Give me the wisdom to know how all of these things work together in my life. Keep me from folly. Keep me from presumption. Keep me from foolishness. Help me to learn. Help me to listen. And if God is calling you to take risks, go ahead and take it if you know it is the Lord. If it is the Holy Spirit speaking and you know it, and it's confirmed to you, then go ahead and do it. Because that's how the supernatural happens. That's how miracles happen. When we are willing to lay aside reason because God has spoken to us very clearly, very specifically, or we are just simply acting on, on God's word, correctly applying that word and acting on that word. And Lord, we pray even as we stand here that you would grant to each of us the spirit of wisdom and revelation, God. To know how to walk with you. If there are people here this morning, God, who are about to make decisions that could actually be dangerous or wrong or erroneous, I pray you will make it known to them. I pray that by the Holy Spirit, you will keep them, Lord, from Abraham. Keep them from making mistakes. Father, I just pray that 
If there are people who've caught up with an idea, with a thought that is actually wrong, I pray you'll release them from it, God. Delusions of the mind, release them from it, God. Let the spirit of truth bring truth. Release people. Keep us on the right path as we walk with you. Order our steps, O oh God. Yet, Father, I pray that none of us will be afraid to take risks. None of us will be afraid to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. That none of us will be afraid to take steps of faith. Help us, Father, we pray. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We'd love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website, apcwo.org, for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.